welcome all your brother and sister in Christ in this time that we will sing the song of praise to worship the Lord all together. Uh, I feel grateful for this opportunity since now our church have at times that we prepare ourselves to be near the events of the Easter, which is the time that we try to focus on the Savior, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that, I would like us, all of us, to sing a song that remind to His grace, to His work, and through the gift, the present that we have received through the Spirit that God has given us. Now, let us sing the first song together to say that we will glorify the one and only beautiful one, our God, all together. Let's sing this song. want to stand and clap and sing and glorify, please be feel free. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eyes, no eyes can see, no ears. Heart can fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are, beautiful one, beautiful one. I love, beautiful one. I adore, beautiful one. My soul must sing you, beautiful one. You beautiful one, I love, beautiful one, I adore, you beautiful one, my soul, my sing, powerful, so powerful, powerful, so powerful, you glory fill the skies, your mighty works display for The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing. How marvelous, how wonderful you are. Let's sing all together. Beautiful one, I love. Beautiful one, I adore. You beautiful one, my soul, my Open my eyes to your wonders anew. You capture my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. You open my eyes. You open my eyes to your wonders anew. You capture my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Let's sing it again. Beautiful one. one, I love, beautiful one, I adore you, beautiful one, my soul, my sing, beautiful one, beautiful one, I love, beautiful one, I adore, beautiful one, my soul, my sing, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. You beautiful one, my soul must sing. 
my soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. You beautiful one. The Lord, you are beautiful one, the one and only true God. And in the book of Rome, chapter 11, verse 36, say, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Because God created all things by his mighty hand and preserved our lives and let us be in the planning in His way of grace and love so we might know Him more and more in day by day. Let's sing this song together because from, from our God all things are created and live to glorify Him. saints and angels, let's worship, they bow before your throne, all the other cats, their crown before the Lamb of God to sing, all the saints and angels. All the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. All the elder cast their crown before the Lamb for God to sing. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. All of saints and angels bow. Before your throne, all the saints and angels they bow before your throne. All the elder cast their crown before the Lamb for God to see. You're worthy of it all. Sing it. You're worthy. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Day and night, night and day. Day and night, night and day, the incense arise, where the incense of worship arise. Day and night, night and day, the incense arise. Day and night, night and day, the incense arise. Day and night, night and day, the incense arise. Day and night. Day and night, night and day, let incense, let worship rise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. All. You're worthy, 
you're worthy of it all. Oh, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Sing it again. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. From you are all things, and to you are all things. Because of that, our God is deserve the glory. And praise. Let us sing the last song together to say that our God Jesus Christ, our Savior, is more than enough for us to live in this world with His love and His grace. Let's sing it together. Let's say that He is more than enough for us. When the mountains roar and the seas turn rough, but my word stands strong, says the Lord. When the world gets tough, feel we broken heart, but my love won't fall, says the Lord. Sing it. Your love is powerful. Me shall bow. Your love is mighty. The earth will shake. Your grace abounds in us. You're more than enough for me, Jesus. You are able. Jesus, you are able to break every chain. Our lives in your hand. You're in control. Grace overflows in us. You're more than enough for me. Let's sing it when the mountains fall. When the mountains fall and the seas turn rough, but my words stand strong, says the Lord. When the world gets tough and the broken heart, but my love won't fall, says the Lord. Let's sing this to our Lord. Your love is powerful. Your love is powerful. Me shall bow. Your love is mighty. The earth will shake. Your grace abounds in us. You're more than enough for me, Jesus. You are able. Jesus, you are able to break every chain. Our lives in your hand. You're in control. 
overflows in us. You're more than enough for me. Let's sing it to Him. Your love is powerful. Your love is powerful. Me shall bow. Your love is mighty. The earth will shake. Your grace abounds in us. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you are able. Jesus, you are able to break every chain. Our lives in your hand. You're in control. Grace overflows in us. You're more than enough for me. Grace overflow in us. Grace overflows in us. You're more than enough for me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have. Put our minds in this time that we worship you. That we have chance to shout your name and glorify you alone and sing. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty Tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. You shout to the Lord, shout to the Lord of the earth. Let us see. The power and majesty praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar of the sound of Your name. I sing for joy of the work of Your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compared to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior. My Jesus, my Savior. Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, Towers and refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Let's sing it. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord of the earth. Let us sing. 
power and majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar of the sound sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hand forever i love you forever i stand nothing compares to the nothing compares in nothing compares to the promise i am nothing compares nothing compares to the promise i have in you our lord is faithful his promise is never for his love his grace is dwell with us in this life and the day afterward that we will live with him in heaven there is opportunity that be blessing that we hear out the word of god and let the lord be glorified alone God bless us. Good morning. I wish to like to welcome you all to our international English worship service at Watana Church. And in this month of April is the month of family and elderly. I wish you all have a good opportunity to share your love with your family members as well as brother and sister in Christ. And as we come together in one fellowship to worship our living God, let us turn to God with glad hearts. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night to the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you made me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. Psalm chapter 92, verse 1 to 4. Now I would like to call upon our pastor, Reverend Anne, to lead us in personal prayer and confession. Good morning. We always give thanks to God that we can bring ourselves truly and honestly into God's presence. We don't have to lie, we don't have to hide, because our God made us, loves us, forgives us, and makes us new. Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 43. But you didn't call out to me, Jacob, you were tired of me, Israel. You didn't bring me lambs for your entirely burned offering. You didn't honor me with your sacrifices. I didn't make you worship with offerings. I didn't weary you with frankincense. You didn't buy spices for me with your money 
or satisfy me with the fat of your sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your evil actions. Let us take a moment in silence to confess the truth about ourselves to God. The words of Isaiah also say this. Don't remember the prior things. Don't ponder ancient history. Look, I'm doing a new thing. Now it sprouts up. Don't you recognize it? I'm making a way in the desert, paths in the wilderness. I have put water in the desert and streams in the wilderness to give water to my people, my chosen ones, this people whom I formed for myself, who will recount my praise, says the Lord. Let us continue in an attitude of prayer. Dear God, why is it sometimes too easy to criticize the behavior of other people when we may not understand what they are doing or why. We may not see the truth in their hearts. Sometimes, like Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus, sometimes, like Judas, we might scold someone else when they are doing your perfect will, as Mary of Bethany did when she washed the feet of Jesus. It is only our selfishness, our narrow-mindedness, that makes us fail to see others the way you see them. Help us to remember to be slow, to determine what others should do or not do, because they are your children and you know their hearts. Help us to be humble as your children too, and as followers of Jesus, so that we can have the power through your Holy Spirit to do your will in this world, to offer your love, grace, healing, and resurrection power in this world. And now, as our Lord taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.
from Philippians 3 verses uh, 4, 13 to 14. Brothers and sisters, I know that I still have a long way to go, but there is one thing I do. I forget what is in the past and try so hard as I can reach the goal before me. I keep running hard toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine. Because God has called me through Jesus Christ to live up there in heaven. Let us listen to the teaching from the scripture and the sermon today by Reverend Anne E. Gagley. Listen to these words from John's Gospel, the 12th chapter, the first eight verses. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, home of Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Lazarus and his sisters hosted a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who joined him at the table. Then Mary took an extraordinary amount, almost three quarters of a pound, of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She anointed Jesus' feet with it, then wiped his feet dry with her hair. The house was filled with the aroma of the perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, Judas complained. This perfume was worth a year's wages. Why wasn't it sold and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would take what was in it. Then Jesus said, Leave her alone. This perfume was to be used in preparation for my burial, and this is how she has used it. You will always have the poor among you, but you won't always have me. It occurs to me in this month, both of Lent and Easter, as well as family and elderly, that almost every story in the Bible is about family. This one is about the family that Jesus chose, because not everyone on this earth has a family of their own. But because of Jesus Christ, we can be part of a family that he chooses. So here we see this family disagreement. Judas Iscariot might well have been a good businessman. He knew the value of a denarius. Apparently, he was the treasurer for the group of disciples. But everyone who knows the gospel story knows that Judas turned out to be one of history's greatest disappointments, (laughs) if not the greatest. His name has come into many languages 
as the name of a traitor. Even non-Christians often know his name. Does anybody in the world honor a traitor? I would argue that some people do. Some people, in fact, plenty of people, and even some Christians, honor Judas, the traitor, in their lives and in their hearts, and especially in their bank accounts. It has been said that every Christian community has its share of people who just love to quote that conversation between Judas and Jesus. It is some people's favorite Bible passage. What am I talking about? You know, the famous saying of Jesus, you always have the poor with you. Older translations say something like, the poor you will always have with you. Was Jesus saying he was happy about that? Was Jesus saying it was part of God's almighty plan from the very beginning to have rich people and poor people? That is so wrong. Has anyone ever heard of the Jubilee year? Anyone? One person. <laughs> I have just quoted what is, at least in my country, one of the best-known Bible passages of all. Well, part of a verse, anyway. You will always have the poor with you. Now, here is one of the most, or the least, known passages of Scripture. And it may be one of the most ignored Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 8 through 13. I am not sure I have ever heard it preached. You shall count off seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the period of seven weeks of years gives 49 years. Then you shall have the trumpets sounded loud on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement. You shall have the trumpets sounded throughout your land, and you shall hallow the fiftieth year, and you shall proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. You shall return every one of you to your property and every one of you to your family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. You shall not sow or reap the aftergrowth or harvest the unpruned vines, for it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat only what the field itself produces. In this year of jubilee, you shall return every one of you to your property. So what does that mean? First of all, the word jubilee comes from the Hebrew, yobel, which means the ram's horn trumpet. The trumpet that was to be sounded every 50th year all across the land. In the tradition of the ancient Hebrew people, people were supposed to be equal. You could not really buy land from someone else. 
you could only lease it at most for 50 years from those who had owned it in the beginning. And during the 50th year, it went back to them. You could not own slaves forever. Among the ancient Hebrew people, you had to set them free every 50th year. Actually, you were supposed to do it every seven years. You could only collect on a debt someone owed you. You could only collect for seven years at the most, and then you had to let it go. You had to forgive that debt. Remember how we pray the Lord's Prayer? Forgive us our debts. And we think, oh, sins. But think about money as well when we pray that. You could not hold people hostage forever based on their debts. And that is very different from the world we live in today. I understand that perhaps a majority of Thai people are in debt. I'm pretty sure it's true in my country of the United States of America as well. And I know that in some parts of the world, people really are slaves. They are enslaved by their debt, and it is done on purpose by those who have lent them the money. Among the ancient Hebrews, you could not farm your land constantly. You had to give it a rest every seventh year, just as you had to rest every seventh day. And if anything grew there in the seventh year, it was free to anyone who came along to get it. This was the tradition of the people of Israel. And everyone around Jesus would have known about it. Although scholars say to us that it probably was never completely practiced. But you could not force people to be poor forever. And you could not get rich based on your neighbor's bad luck or even their bad management. The original intent of the ancestors, that is the law of Moses going back through the ancestors before Moses, back to God our creator, was for people to be equal. And when they failed, of course they failed. The intent was to be sure that they always set aside something for the poor. Do you remember the law among the Hebrew people that you always had to leave a few rows along the side of your crops when you harvested? You could not harvest all of it. You had to leave some of it so that poor people could come and get it for free. I cannot imagine farmers, at least in my country, ever doing that today. Do you remember the story of Ruth? Ruth and Naomi survived because Ruth, Naomi was her mother-in-law, Ruth went to the fields along with the other, the poorest people and harvested what she could from those extra rows of grain that the owner had left behind for the poor. And Ruth became the great-grandmother of King David and the ancestor of Jesus. So what was going on in that conversation between Jesus and Judas? Judas was complaining about the waste of something expensive. And supposedly that perfume cost a year's pay for a day worker or a day laborer. So I was trying to figure out what that might be, a year's pay. I suppose if a day worker worked every day of the month and was paid every day minimum wage, 
it would be about 9,000 baht per month or 108,000 baht for a year. I used to think there wasn't any perfume that would be that expensive. But there is. The world's most expensive perfume is made in Britain, and it is called Clive Christian No. 1. And it sells for more than 400,000 baht for a bottle. And I'm not even talking about the import tax that the Thai government would put on it. There is a large diamond on top of the bottle, and the bottle is made of crystal, and the bottle has an 18-karat gold rim. And they describe the smell with like 12 or 15 ingredients that I don't even... Pineapple, plum, mirabelle, blossoms, white peach, rose, jasmine, elang, elang, orris, carnation, vanilla, benjamin, balm, tonka seed, cedarwood. Okay. Huh. Do you think that's really what Judas cared about? Wasting something that was expensive because it could have helped the poor? You know that's not what it was, and I know that's not what it was. Because even John's gospel says to us, if they had taken that perfume away from Mary and sold it, who would have controlled those prophets? Judas. And he would have been perfectly happy using that money on himself. So what was his motive? Did he really want to live a life of luxury? Or did he want control? I suspect it was control, because if you were following Jesus around the countryside, you couldn't carry a lot of expensive things with you anyway. I don't believe they had a cart or even a donkey. They just walked. I think it was control. Maybe Jesus... Judas, that is. Maybe Judas was bothered. Maybe he was annoyed because he couldn't control Mary. He couldn't control her relationship to Jesus. Maybe he was what they sometimes call a sexist pig. But I think that more than that, he was annoyed because he couldn't control Jesus. Some people who read the story believe that Judas betrayed Jesus because he wanted to force a violent revolution. And he believed that Jesus would win that revolution, overthrow the Roman government, and set up a new government for Israel. And Jesus wasn't doing it fast enough. And those of you who know the story know that in the end, Judas was heartbroken. He really was. His heart was broken. He tried to give back the pieces of silver when he saw that Jesus was going to be killed. He died. Judas died because he did not believe that he could be forgiven. But let us come back to that holy moment, which I have sometimes called a thin place, that place where the holy is so close, it is almost as if you can reach to the other side, to God's new heaven and new earth. That moment when Mary poured the perfume and Judas used the poor excuse. Do you know how it is sometimes when a moment becomes so powerful? Some people become uncomfortable. When things get too intense, too real, even too holy, some people look for someone to scold. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, stop that. 
Remember how Martha scolded Mary for sitting at Jesus' feet like a seminary student instead of doing housework? Well, how about that? We know Mary for being scolded at least twice in the gospel story. And both times she was doing exactly the right thing, according to Jesus. It was something intensely committed, intensely spiritual, and against all conventions and customs that she had been brought up on. Each time she was taking Jesus very seriously, and I do not mean the Thai meaning of that word seriously, where there is some sadness and some irritation. I mean serious in the best way. So is that what we have to learn here? If we start taking Jesus very, very seriously, if we start showing that kind of love, are we going to be scolded by someone? Is someone going to yell at us? Someone who is too small-minded and too small-hearted in that moment? Do we know for sure why Mary washed Jesus' feet with such expensive perfume? Well, we know she was showing love and honor to him. This is not the same as the story in a different gospel that doesn't name the woman and says she was sorry for her sins and so glad for Jesus' forgiveness. This was his friend Mary of Bethany, part of his chosen family. We know that he had raised Lazarus from the dead, and that was probably something that they couldn't even take in. But think of it this way. It was Lazarus's sisters who asked Jesus to do that. And how often did important teachers listen to women? Maybe part of what of the honor she wanted to show was that Jesus had already honored her. He had already shown respect for her. It must mean so much for anyone who has been overlooked or forgotten, for anyone who has been made to feel unimportant, that they don't matter, that they don't count. It must mean so much to know that the most wonderful being who ever lived cares about them. How often did Jesus do that exact thing, show someone honor that nobody else was honoring? I would say he did it every single day, or more than once a day. Only someone who knows what that is like, someone who knows what it is like to be forgotten, to be unimportant, to be overlooked, only someone like that can appreciate the joy that comes from the honor Jesus gives. Remember he talked about the little ones and how important they were? He gave honor to little ones, not just children, because even adults can be little ones. Now, Mary wasn't being selfish. She wasn't trying to show off. You know, I think it is too easy to insult someone else's behavior when they are being more honorable than you are. Mary knew that Jesus' life was in danger, and the rest of them did not really want to think about it. And she may well have realized that she was using the perfume for the dead. But we should also take note of the sin of envy 
on the part of Judas. It's very, very dangerous to envy someone else because they are actually doing a good and new and unusual thing, something that makes the heart of God glad. So we should never use the poor as an excuse when we're trying to hide our own greed or our own need to be in control of other people or any other sin you might name. And we should never assume that we can turn our backs on the poor and go on and be happy because Jesus said you will always have the poor with you. I do not believe he said that with gladness at all. Let us assume instead, when that kind of love is present, even a hint of that kind of love that Mary showed for Jesus and Jesus showed for Mary, when that kind of love is present, surprising things are going to happen unusual things, God things. Thank God for your word that came through as an end today. Let us spend this coming week explore ourselves. Do we have the poor excuse in us? Offertory. Whoever can be trusted with really little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with really little will also be dishonest with much. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Please remain seated as we sing. Let us break bread together.
You are our example today. You taught us not only how to give, but you taught us how to receive. We give you thanks for your example. When you were given a great gift from a thankful heart, you were gracious, and you received that gift in all kindness and gratitude. We pray that we would be delivered from either being wasteful or holding on too much to what we have. We pray that we may value things and people the way you do, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask that we stand together one more time and say the words of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. That moment when Mary poured the perfume on Jesus' feet, it was a very close, holy moment and there was only one disciple who scolded her. What were the other disciples doing? Maybe they did feel that it was a holy moment. Do you think that you could or would ever feel as much love for Jesus as Mary did? Think about this as we share the Lord's Supper today. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper. And he said, this cup is the new promise, the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. I ask that we all stand to receive the cup. For as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please be seated. Good morning once again. Um, I stand here for a greetings and announcement. So at the first place, I would like to welcome all of you, especially those friends who are here for the first time worshiping with us. So I take this privilege to invite our friends who are here for the first time worshiping with us. Can you kindly stand wherever you are and show us your face? Let us welcome them. You all are welcome in our midst. I would like to ask our ushers to um, hand them over the visiting card so that they will be able to fill up. Ushers, can you hand them over the visiting card? Okay. 
Okay, we will go ahead. Um, especially for those of us who are here for the first time, after the service, we have a coffee fellowship at the Mana Hall, which is behind the century, so we can just walk back and have a good time from until 10.30. And after the coffee time, we have Bible study. That is, um, we have two Bible study, one with our pastor, Reverend N, that is um, basic of the Christian's faith, that is with our pastor. And another one is from the book of the Corinthians with uh, Achan Wurchi. So the Bible study will start from uh, 10.30 until 11.45. And after the um, <clears throat> Bible study, we also have lunch fellowship. So we have uh, different fellowships. So you all are most welcome to be a part of that fellowship, especially those friends who are here for the first time. Please join us in all this fellowship. Hymn of Dedication, shall we all stand to sing when I survey the wondrous cross? Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. 